All right, so I've been trying to do a full test with Mikage and Ninja. So on this account, I have a six star blessing for Mikage and I have Ninja right here. Mikage is in a full nine piece set. Allies deal more damage per each buff placed by wearer. Anybody on the Hydra team that has these two buffs, that's a 10% buff on top of having increased attack and increased crit damage. Fully booked. Cruelty, she does not have any um, masteries yet. I'm still gonna work on that. This is Ninja. These are his masteries, taking War Master for some bonus damage. I also do like taking Helm Smasher every now and then, but since I don't really have him in a damage build, more like a uh, functional build, because I needed him specifically for Phantom Shogun. These are his stats. Only 4.2k, 251 speed, not 100%, mostly focusing on his HP burn. Most people are going to end up focusing on if, you know, you just got Ninja and you wanted to build them out. I doubt that a lot of you guys are going to build them out in Savage on top of having the stats that you need to put them in comps, right? So we have Razzlevark here, and then we have our other damage dealer as well as Venus. So these two actually do a lot of damage together. We're on hard, and then we have Tuanarok to deal with putting up the block buffs as well as taking care of Fearhead. I'm just going to kind of let it go, but I will target here and there where I deem it to be appropriate. I mean, if I can think ahead of it. All right, so he's chopping through on hard. It looks like we're doing about 30K with those HP burns. That's what that looks like. All right, so we got the cleansing off. That's just kind of SOL. It is what it is. I'm just going to let it run, let it ride. Now, I made a mistake. Not really a mistake because I... I mean, it kind of wasn't, it kind of wasn't, right? So I did a video trying to compare damage from Mikage and Ninja with Mikage and Harima. I got a little bit of flack on that. Now, it's not your guys' fault. If, you know, you're watching this and wondering, it's not entirely your guys' fault. I think you guys are in the right to uh, make the suggestions and talk about the things that you talked about. The main thing was like, oh, um they were built differently like my harima and my ninja were built differently that's on my alt account right like harima was obviously in just like better gear even though i put them both in savage i would say ninja had only like four 4.5k attack or five yeah 4500 attack while harima had like 7200 defense so that was one thing and the other thing was ninja has a move called escalation like a passive called escalation on his a1 i think it is let me take a look right now but basically every time he takes a turn he's going to um increase the damage that he puts so where is it right here increases ninja's attack by 10 percent up to 100 and crit damage up to 25 percent each time a single enemy is hit by all three right so when fighting bosses it increases to 20 percent up to 100 and up uh, by 10%, sorry, by 10%, by 20%, up to 25%. So there were people saying that I should have let him run all, I should have let both of them run all the way to 100. That was the other thing. So the first thing, the, the first, I guess, um, issue that people had with my damage comparison, even though it wasn't really like a guide or it wasn't really meant to be informative, it was more like I was just curious and I wanted to see. So it was kind of more for me, but I also wanted to share my relative findings. Like I, I did my best to kind of make them similar, but to be honest, it wasn't, you know, a perfect one for one. And I explained that, but I still wanted to go ahead and give uh, at least Ninja and Mikage a chance. So Ninja has his escalation. I'm going to let him run to, actually, I'm going to let it run all the way. I'm going to do a full run here, let it finish out. But that was, that was the thing. They were like, um, you should let him run to 100. If I was going to do another damage comparison with Mikage and whatever Shadowkin, that's another video I intend to do, by the way, um, like Mikage and uh, Michinaki or Mikage and Ninja. And or I guess the Ninja is already being done right now, but uh, Ninja and Harima, but like an entire run. But I digress. They, uh, whoever commented it, I can't remember everybody's names exactly, but they were like, hey, let them run to turn 100 that way they can get their full like it would have given them enough time to power up all the way 
this head I need to focus down on this head because this head's gonna gank me. Like that's uh that's not good. He almost hit the crap out of me. There's no decrease attack. This team doesn't have decrease attack. Well now he's dead, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Oh yeah, okay. So that's the uh other thing. I think oh that sorry. If you saw that video between Ninja and Harima, the comparison, you saw that Ninja was doing a pretty good amount of damage. He was chopping through. On this account, Ninja isn't in Savage, and Ninja is not built uh, with 100% crit rate. So, you know, keep that in mind as well. But I think it's nice to see the relative difference in stats. That's also why I do things on a lot of different accounts, because not everybody is going to be able to attain my uh, stats some people could do better but a lot of people often just you know aren't quite there yet remember i've been playing for five plus years pay to win also so i think sometimes when i have weaker stats on a on a different champion and i'm able to showcase that on different accounts then it's a little bit more relatable i try my best to sometimes be relatable depending on what it is for the most part, I kind of just do whatever I want. Now, I'm going to do whatever I want just because that's, you know, it's my channel. I'm going to continue to do whatever it is that I want. But sometimes I try to be helpful and sometimes I try to be relatable. Um, but yeah, just sharing that. So I'm going to let this run. And um, yeah, I'll uh, report back to you at the end and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. I don't know if any of you guys ever want to see like a full run. I don't think I could talk for that long. But... Um, yeah uh let me know if you ever want to see like a full hydro run i think most of you would prefer to just like have me edit and and cut to the very end but if not and you want to see me do a full hydro run then um let me know i'd be curious to see i don't i don't mind doing it you know what i mean so like if, if that's something that you guys want to see and you'd be willing to at least uh watch it or like let it run or i don't i don't know like hear me talk i'll do my best to keep talking but it's really hard to keep talking sometimes. Like, even right now, I'm struggling to find words to, to commentate on. I guess I could talk more about the, the Hydra one itself, but, you know, there's not really much else to talk about. I mean, I guess I could dive more into the actual uh, team here and what I'm looking for and how I built this team. In fact, I might as well go ahead and do that. We'll start from left to right. And, um, yeah. So, this is the Head of Wrath. He hits really hard. He also gets a boost to damage with increased attack, he provokes, but the biggest thing here is his vengeance move. Whenever he has this counter up here, all the way up to 14, he is going to get a damage boost. As you saw, that was um, 300%. Like, he hits really hard. So, the way I mitigate this damage is by having a block buff on him so that he doesn't get the buffs. He also doesn't get a reflect damage because when he does get this, he also gets a reflect damage, a reflect damage buff. I, I don't really see it here, but um, trust me, he gets it. It's really annoying. The other way, the other thing that ideally you would want to do, especially if you go above hard, is you want to make sure you're getting decreased attack on him. Those two things are very important. And by doing that, you don't get hit as hard. The other thing that you can do to um, make sure he doesn't, um, you know, gank you is kill him before he i know it's easier said than done but oftentimes aiming down on him will will get it done because he's not like the tankiest head there's an, there's another head here that is uh, a lot tankier this buff right here also um whenever a new head pops out they get this buff here and it basically mitigates the damage that they receive by like 75 percent. i think it's pretty pretty huge i don't don't quote me on 75 percent by the way but this head here places fears passively so the head of torment true fears will make it so that you basically waste a move if you have a fear so anybody who attacks that head gets a fear and if they try to use an active skill it goes on cooldown because it procs it doesn't always proc but more often than not it's going to proc how do you get around this well one um i like putting hex up we'll talk about that in a minute and try to uh, do damage to him you know through that means that oh, that was nice did you see that ninja did 809k the other way to do it is to have somebody with a passive effect like tuana rock or doom priest who isn't epic if you make them fast enough maybe even put them in relentless they can clear off a bunch of debuffs so that it's not too much of a big issue 
Uh, notice this buff came up again with the Hydra Heads. It means they're going to be receiving less damage, so oftentimes I don't really aim down on them because there's not too much point to it. But the other thing is Inquisitor Shamael. So if you have Inquisitor Shamael, he has a passive effect. So whenever this Head of Torment comes up, he places the True Fears. Inquisitor Sham has a passive to instantly remove that fear right here so that everybody can take the turns that they need to take without having to worry about missing anything. And you also see Tuana Rock um, took care of that passive right there, uh, with her passive, took care of that with her passive, of, to passive, I should say. If I have the opportunity to, and everything is perfectly aligned, I also like to make sure I'm aiming down on this head because if I can get rid of this head, then all of the true fears that are there will go away and I don't really have to worry about it. The next head here is the Head of Cleansing. This Head of Decay, I call it the Head of Cleansing, but it's the Head of Decay, on her A2. She's gonna do a full cleanse of the debuffs and that's extremely annoying, especially in conjunction with the Poison Clouds. Poison Clouds go up, you're gonna be weak hitting. It sucks. The A3 will place a Life Shield or a Life Barrier, removes all debuffs from a single head, and then it will place a shield on them. It's not like the worst shield in the world that you know if you have a decent damage dealer you can take care of the shield but basically if you don't take care of that shield then the hydra head is going to be fully healed now it's also kind of a double-edged uh, sword for the head of decay because if you're able to destroy that shield before the um the shield counter um, goes away then the hydra head gets stunned and you can use that to your advantage of, um, at certain points. Like, if you want to use it against the Head of Wrath, let's say the Head of Wrath comes up and you have the Life Barrier on him. Well, if you have the uh, sh uh, Life Barrier on him and you uh, destroy the Life Barrier, he doesn't hit as hard. I, you know, it's weird, right? Because sometimes the Head of Wrath will still proc his um, Head of Wrath or his Vengeance. I keep saying Head of Wrath. His Vengeance ability will still attack you even when he's stunned sometimes but more often than not it doesn't really like have a good effect or like at least he can't attack you same thing with this head here but the downside is, okay so here now this is a pretty dangerous situation because the head of wrath here did place the reflect damage if i hit him it's gonna hurt me so that's also why i have venus here we take that off we continue about our day one thing i like to do is aim down on these headless heads, the decapitated heads, whenever they are um, exposed. Because if I can do that, then I'm doing an extra 200% damage to them. So anytime that you're doing a Hydra run, if you find that you're like lacking energy or you're like squeezing out that last bit of damage, you do want to aim down on the other heads as well. The uh, other head that we see here, the Head of Blight, does two really annoying things. One, Okay, well, I mean, the, the poison in it itself isn't really that annoying because it um, throws a bunch of poisons on your entire team. It can explode it, but the uh, mist, the poison mist, the fog that it places is what I was talking about, where it makes it so that you have to hit um, weak all the time, and that really sucks. So anytime you uh, see him, sometimes you're going to want to place decreased speed on like the head of cleansing here because especially at the beginning of the turn, the head of cleansing and the poison head both come up at the same time and the um you know like if you try to place your block buffs you can stop the poison clouds from going up but if the head of cleansing removes those uh block buffs then you're kind of sol and you kind of have to wait until like in the beginning of this run you saw i had to wait uh for the poison clouds to fall off the other way to get around that is by having somebody place burns so if oh 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 Reflect damage. It's not good. Luckily, we have Leech on. Leech is kind of uh, helping us out here. So we're going to hit the A1 here. I'm going to take this off. Auto. Razzlevarg has a Leech. And anytime you attack anybody with a Leech, it's sort of like a mini lifesteal. Now, if you have somebody tanky enough, sometimes you can just power through and, and hit this so that it just goes away you don't have to waste uh this but now is a perfect time because anytime this head steals i like to remove those buffs anyway 
So we're going to aim down on the head of Mischief, who likes to steal things. Steals buffs, steals turn meter, messes the flow up and everything. But the, li the nice thing I do like about him is that anytime I attack him and I'm able to kill him, the turn meter of everybody goes back. That's including decapitated heads. So, you know, take that, um, take advantage of that every now and then. Did I mention HP burns make it so that you can hit through the poison mist and the poison mist is actually ineffective? I forgot if I mentioned that. But yeah, I think that's the majority of the heads. Oh, there was the other head, the tankier head. Really slow. Even when he's decapitated, he's rather slow. But he basically does ally protect. I think we saw that earlier. He does ally protect. And he also places reflect damage. I think it's this head, actually. Yeah, the head of suffering. The other thing that he does is um, decrease the damage all Hydra heads take by 30%. Also increases the res of everybody. So that that pretty much sucks. And then he also has all this uh, extra stuff that I don't really pay attention to. But here, ally protect, provoke, reflect damage. He provokes you so that you try so that you're forced to attack him unless you can get the block buffs up in time. And then he places the reflect damage. So if he does that, then anytime you attack him again, you often end up killing yourself. Also, this I forgot to mention the head of mischief makes it so that unless you have hex on him, 75% chance, 3 out of 4 times, you're going to not be able to target him. He's going to redirect your single target. That's why it's nice to have some AoEs in here. AoE champs. And it's also nice to have a Hex champion. Somebody like um, Venus, who is in a cursed set, who just placed the um, Hex on him. So now I can actually target this head if I wanted to. Get him out of here so that he can't be that much of an issue. This head over here just placed the reflect damage, what I was talking about. So if I were to attack him, it's going to reflect back on me and it's going to hurt. But luckily, again, Venus has the passive to remove any buffs that are up as, as long as Cupidus is on the team. As you also might have noticed, he's got a move here called Pain Link. Anytime he places a Pain Link on one of us, one of those debuffs, anytime I attack, that champion receives a portion of that damage. So yeah, that's basically the Hydra heads and, you know, the way that I deal with them here and there. I, I might have missed something, but, you know, it is what it is. So Tawana Rock, like I said, here to take care of the debuffs. As you see, she's fast. She's in Relentless. We want her to take as many turns, um, all the turns that she can take. She doesn't hit too hard, but, you know, yeah, any little bit of damage helps. Her A1 places a continuous heal, so we're getting some heals off in the, um, in the team here. Then she places um, the A2. With her A2, she places decrease attack. She places block buffs. And she can also spread that with her... Um, actually, I should probably take a look at her skills because I completely forgot already. Let me see if I can take a gander real quick. Yeah, so her A2... Ah, okay, so it, it does do a debuff, debuff spread. So decrease attack, debuff spread taking two random debuffs and then placing them on all the other enemies. That's pretty handy. Then her A3 places increased defense, which is pretty handy on your entire team, plus increased speed. You want to be going as fast as you can, taking as many turns as possible. And then if anybody has continuous heals, it's two random buffs instead of just one. So there she is. And then of course, Ninja popping off the main reason we came through, just to see what Ninja does. And maybe we should actually take some time to focus on his damage let me take this off of auto let's do this keep it as putting in work and all right so we have the ally protect up let's get rid of the head of wrath okay i guess we're not going to get rid of him but we're going to do a decent amount of damage to him now a3 against the decapitated head you're hitting for 371 that is with no debuffs up hit this head gonna hit this head keep that decrease attack on and gonna hit the a1 looks like ninja hit for 184 let's check these a2s 20k um, for the hp burn hits activations the nice thing about having hex is that if you hit one head anybody who has the hex i think it takes like 10 percent so like look yeah that's 10 percent right because if I hit here, oh, it's gone. Well, you get you get what I'm trying to say. So, and 66. 
Let's see here. All right, check the A1, hitting that for 96. Oh, that's right, he doesn't have 100%. I'm basically using him for HP burns. So trying to see exactly how hard he hits doesn't really help, but you guys see that HP burns does help out. Because 30K spread around, um, every time one HP burn pops off, everybody on the team, everybody on the opposite team receives HP burns. So we have a lot of HP burns going off uh, right now in Venus and Cupidus. That's pretty cool. Okay, we're at 226 right now. Million. I totally forgot to talk about the entire team. So I talked about Tuanarok. We already know Ninja does his uh, HP burns. Venus is in a cursed set. She brings the decreased defense and the weaken. She also places, or she is, she's also able to do poisons with her A1. The most important thing is that she brings the decreased defense and the weaken. And because a lot of her moves are AOE, like her A3, which brings the HP burns, having her in a cursed set is extremely helpful. You know, that that the difference between having Hex on your team versus not is pretty much night and day. Like Putting a curse set on your champion that does a bunch of AoEs is just huge. That's why a lot of people run Nekmo or even Razzlevarg in a curse set, Lydia in a curse set. It's it's huge. So definitely go ahead and uh, make that happen if you can. See these these hexes popping off. Razzlevarg is here to go fast, to help us go fast with his aura. He places the increased speed. He places the leeches. He um, also actually does a fair amount of damage. Let me see if I can see what his other skills do. Um, so yeah, his A1 hits multiple times, turn meter boost, leech. Uh, then he does, does, oh, increase accuracy as well. And he's just an overall awesome champion. He just goes really fast. Increase speed buff placed by this champion by five up to 100. So, uh, you know, after a while he gets a speed boost as well. And on top of that, he gets a damage boost as well because a lot of his damage, sorry, his damage based off attack and speed then of course we have cupidus cupidus and venus go cupidus don't die cupidus and venus go mighty fine together because cupidus actually gets a 50 percent bonus to damage a boost when he's paired with venus and every time anybody on the oof that was close that was close that could have been game ending right there anytime that we're hit and Cupidus hit is hit, he automatically um, counterattacks with his A1. And having him here with AoEs all the time is just huge. He's in a savage set built for damage. Of course, we have Mikage here, part of the idea of the video. Every time Mikage attacks with her A1 in this form, you see right there, Ninja went to uh, go and attack as well. Then she places the increased attack and uh, increased crit damage. And because it's in a protection set, everybody's getting a lot more damage. And then she does the decrease deep. I'm um, sorry, the decrease buff duration on the enemy. And then decrease. How do I say it? My bad. She decreases the. Um, oh God, I should just read it. Hold up. I'm so sorry. Uh, attacks all enemies, decreases the duration of all enemy buffs and all ally debuffs by one turn so everybody's getting something and then increases the duration of all enemy buffs and all ally buffs so buff manipulation and that's pretty huge okay so we are now approaching the last um hundred turns that are left before we hit the turn limit and i gotta say i'm pretty impressed with ninja because ninja when he's fully charged up he starts hitting for like 700 almost 800 thousand just on his a1 and that's pretty impressive here so i'm gonna um, you know keep targeting here and letting it run so that uh you know we hit the turn limit here try to get as much damage as possible i'd say like Mika for a full run makage and ninja did surprisingly like really well i initially didn't give him enough credit i think because I obviously was going to use Harima and I was like, oh, well, you know, Harima is already better. And, um, you know, since Ninja has for the longest time only been part of like my Sand Devil team or my, uh, what do you call it? My Phantom Shogun team. I wasn't really like giving him that much attention, but dude, he, he deserves it. And I, I, I got to give it to him. He's, he's been putting in some serious work here. And, um, and we got 40 turns left. Try to do as much as possible here. 
Can we get to 600? Is that enough? Am I asking for too much? 500, 67, like he's hitting pretty hard. And granted, that's not with 100% crit rate or in Savage. So like, imagine if I had built him in Savage gear and like really min-maxed him out and put like Helm Smasher on him for an example. Like, I'm pretty sure he'd be doing pretty well. Um, yeah. So let's go ahead and probably finish off the last 10 turns here on this head. Squeeze out every little bit of damage. Well, I can't really say that because it's it was a um, semi-auto run, I should say, where you where you um, you just kind of point and click. So Ninja and Venus both kind of came head to head. Of course, Razzlevarg and Cupidus did quite a bit of damage. In fact, Razzlevarg even out damaged Cupidus with all of his AOEs and all those extra turns he was taking. Really impressive. And I think part of the reason why Ninja was able to do so much was being paired up with Lady Makage. Ninja,